Today we're going to be doing some builds very quickly for the crossbow, each of its overclocks, and a weapon that I would pair with it. This is not going to be a super in-depth video. If you've seen the rest of this series, then you kind of know the drill. We're going to go over each overclock in no particular order, and a secondary, or in this case a primary weapon, that I would pair with them. There's two major pros to the crossbow. One is that it hits really hard, so it does really good single target damage on any difficulty. It's really, really good for taking out high value targets like Trijaws, Acid Spitters, Menaces, really anything, even if you just need to hit something pretty hard. It also has a very high chance of stunning. That is another pro to it, where if you don't kill something, there's a high chance you're going to stun it regardless, assuming it didn't get stunned recently. One of the other major pros to the crossbow is its unique bolts. You can have three different unique bolts, no matter what type of overclock you want to run with it. And we'll talk about those once we get to builds, because they do change the way the crossbow works, but it's mostly up to personal preference or depending on what mission type you're going on as to how useful they're actually going to be. Going over the three uh, pheromone bolts, which makes it so enemies can attack one another. That can be pretty useful. It works similar to the pheromone grenades, just it doesn't splash like a grenade does. Then you have the chemical bolts, which don't deal as much damage as regular bolts, but they do more damage than something like the pheromone bolts and they deal damage over time. And then if an enemy dies with a chemical bolt in it, it will explode dealing damage to everything around it, which can be useful in certain mission types and against certain types of enemies. And then you have the electricity bolts, which if you stick an electricity bolt down, it will zap anything that comes near it, or it will inflict electricity on whatever you hit. And if you connect multiple bolts together, you'll basically create an electric fence, which can slow enemies down and deal damage over time, which can be pretty nice. Let's get into the overclocks now. First up, our very first overclock is bodkin points. Once you hit an enemy with bodkin points, the bolt will then try to bounce into another enemy and bounce one more time into a separate enemy or potentially back and forth between two enemies. If you hit one, hit the other, and then comes back. That is a possibility with it. The downsides to this, though, are that you get a longer reload speed, which isn't a huge deal for the crossbow, and you also get a major reduction in damage. That one is the one that hurts the crossbow the most, and it can make it so this overclock feels kind of awkward. It actually works pretty well for crowd control, but Scout's primary weapons do that too. However, this is probably my favorite overclock for the crossbow because it's just so fun to use. The way that I typically build bodkin points is like this. So in tier one, we're going to the pheromone bolts. However, in tier one, pick whichever bolts you want or that you need. I usually like the pheromones for this so that we can keep more enemies at bay. And most of the time I'm just using the crossbow to kind of clear smaller enemies away anyway, or at least medium sized enemies like grunts. In tier two, I'm going with damage. This actually ups our damage enough so that we can one shot body shot grunts on any difficulty. You can also one shot headshot slashers on any difficulty with this. And I believe acid spitters too, or you get very close with a one shot from an acid spitter. In tier three, we're going to faster reload speed. This also counts for a faster swap speed. This is the one I usually go with in tier three, but you could go with the faster moving bolts. I don't find that those are always necessary. I find the faster reload speed to be a little bit more useful on most builds with the crossbow. In tier 4, the faster move speed, so when we do kill something, we can move a little bit quicker. Makes it really easy to constantly outpace hordes with this. Scout already outpaces hordes very easily anyway, but more mobility is better in my opinion, so that's why I like to take it. And then in tier 5, I'm taking the more potent bolts. This makes it so the pheromone bolts last even longer. Usually I take this one if I'm running the pheromone bolts or the chemical bolts it can be pretty good on. However, you could run the fear on this too if you want. That can work pretty well too. So if you end up missing, you can fear enemies and then pick your bolt back up. The more potent bolts I just like for a longer lasting uh, effect over time so that they can pull aggro a little bit better. It's really nice to stick a pheromone bolt into something big like an oppressor or a Praetorian and everything goes for that. Now for a primary weapon, I'm going to be taking this with the GK2 and I'm going to be taking electric reload with it. Electric Reload is a little bit of an awkward overclock that I don't use too often, but it makes it so you can spread out pressure pretty easily with the GK2, and aside from that, it doesn't nerf the GK2 too hard. For our second overclock, we have Cryo Bolts. This is a bounce overclock that makes it so your bolts do less damage, but now your bolts can freeze enemies over time when they hit, which can be pretty cool. It also gives off a cold radiance, so anything walking near it will also build up its cold meter. Freezing enemies can be very, very useful because it makes it so you can hit them even harder once they are frozen. It's also really nice for the team to deal higher damage to any frozen enemy, and it's also really good if you have a driller on the team that has a cryo cannon so you can build up the frost meter on enemies even faster. It's really good for dreadnought missions and it can be really good for big enemies like bulk detonators. The way I like to build cryo bolts is like this. So in tier one, I am taking the pheromone bolts. I would always recommend that you take the pheromone bolts with this one because you just need to tag something big with the pheromone bolt. Everything tries to go around it and then you stick a cryo bolt on it and then just watch everything around it freeze. It can be really, really useful for that. In tier two, we're going with more special bolts so that we can use the pheromone bolts more often. And that's what we're primarily gonna use the uh, ice bolts for or to take out big single targets. 
that might be out in the open, like the uh, breeders, nexuses, or the spitballers. It can be really good for killing any of them. Tier 3, we're going to faster reload speed, but pick whichever one you'd like. I just like this for the faster uh, bolt swap speed and the faster reloads. Uh, in Tier 4, we're going with the movement. I wouldn't really recommend that you take the uh, bolts that come back to you on this one. The main reason being is that you can't get the uh, cryo bolts after you've shot them. It'll be the same thing with the fire bolts and a couple other bolts like the Trifork Volley. And then in Tier 5, we're going with the potent bolts so that they last longer. This just makes it so we can more easily freeze more enemies with this. And this one is really good against crowds. It's also really good against single targets. So any sort of primary weapon works really well with this. I decided to take active stability system for the M1000 with this which is a fantastic overclock. It lets you focus in a little bit quicker on enemies, and it also lets you move a little bit faster when you are focusing. This can be a very fast-moving build that works really well against single targets. Scouts generally love killing anything big, Praetorians, Oppressors, whatever it might be, uh, dealing high damage to Dreadnoughts and stuff like that. For our third build, we have the Fire Bolts. The Fire Bolts are basically the same as the Cryo Bolts, just they light things on fire. Big shocker there. They do a little bit reduced damage, but that's okay, the fire does linger. It also lingers in place where the Bolt is, so you can actually light things on fire pretty easily with this. Fire Bolts are pretty nice because they synergize really well with a lot of uh, other gear. They can be especially useful with the Neurotoxin Grenades or with like the Sludge Pump. The way I have this built is basically the same way that I built the Cryo Bolts, although I have one swapped in Tier 2. You could of course switch it back if you would like. So I'm going with Pheromone Bolts, that way we can have enemies just clump together and we can light them on fire really easy. More ammo in Tier 2, but you could take more special bolts. Both are really good with this one. Usually don't need damage with this. Um, the fire is going to do a decent amount of damage. I wouldn't recommend you take this on Dreadnought missions though, since you can't light them on fire. Cryo bolts would be better for that situation. Faster reload in Tier 3, just so that we can reload and swap faster, although you don't need this if you don't want it. Faster move speed in Tier 4, same type of deal with the cryo bolts too. It, it makes a little bit more sense to take this rather than the one that brings it back to you. And then the longer lasting pheromone bolts in Tier 5, that way we can just potentially like even more things on fire. For a primary weapon, I decided to pair this with the Drac, and I decided to go with aggressive venting to make sure that we have even more fire. This is just a pure crowd control build for Scout. It's really fun. It does a lot of damage for crowds. Would not recommend on a Dreadnought mission though. It doesn't do very well against them, and it doesn't do amazing against really big enemies like uh, oppressors. They can kind of just tank through this. You could always put like Berserker on Scout and clear them up super easy though too. For our fourth overclock, we have Triforg Volley. This is an unstable overclock that lets you fire up three bolts at the same time. You cannot collect these bolts and you do have a longer reload speed when you fire these out. Now this overclock is really cool. This hits really hard. It's similar to like Jumbo Shells or Embedded Detonators. This is the heavy hitting overclock on the crossbow and it can do massive amounts of damage. The way I usually like to build this is like this. So in tier one, I'm going with electricity bolts. This can really help, especially with the magnetic shafts in tier five, so that we can deal even more damage and more consistent damage to enemies. However, you could pick whichever bolts you would like in tier one. I just really like the electricity bolts with this, especially against really big enemies like dreadnoughts. Fire two electricity bolts into them and they will be slowed to an absolute crawl. Makes it really easy to pace around them with scout and that way you can just keep hitting them at the weak spot. Tier 2, you could go with damage or with ammo. I'm going with ammo on this one, but damage works really well too if you just want to have more burst damage. That can be potentially really good if you have a very ammo-efficient primary weapon, which we, we're going to be taking a decent one for this. So you could go with more damage if you'd like. Tier 3, I would recommend the faster reload speed. This one does reload kind of slow, and you don't usually need the faster moving bolts on this, because most of the time you're not firing this at really long range. The further away enemies are, the more spread you're going to have across your three bolts, and that's just kind of awkward to use. In tier 4, we're going with the faster move speed when we kill something. You can't retrieve these bolts and you can't retrieve the electric bolts. That's really our only option here. And most of the time, you're just going to want to save this for big enemies, but still, you'll get a little bit of a bonus from it. And then in tier 5, magnetic shafts. That way, we get more damage on hit once we put an electricity bolt on something, and we get guaranteed uh, hits where our shot is actually being fired. This one is super fun. It's really good on a Dreadnought mission. And I decided to pair this with gas rerouting for the GK2. This is a clean overclock. That is just kind of a nice quality of life overclock for the GK2. And the GK2 works pretty well against basically everything. So you could really switch this out for whatever overclock you want. You do probably want something that is a little bit more ammo efficient for your crossbow though, because you can run through bolts with it pretty quick. For our fifth build, we have quick fire. This is a clean overclock that gets you a faster reload speed and faster projectile velocity. That's pretty nice for the crossbow. The base crossbow is already pretty good, so having these little nice quality of life uh, improvements are even better. 
and it makes it so you can build the crossbow really however you would like. The crossbow, base crossbow, isn't necessarily missing anything besides like the special bolts, so pick whichever one of those you'd like. This is the way I usually have it built. So I run pheromone bolts, but any of the bolts are really good. Pick whichever one you want. Tier 2, kind of the same deal. All of the tier 2 options are really good. Pick damage if you want to hit big things a little bit harder. Pick ammo if you just want to be using this more often. And pick special bolts if you just really like the special bolts, whichever one you wish to take. Tier 3, I like going to the fast reload speed. Uh, both in Tier 3 are really nice with this one. Having super fast moving bolts can be really fun because you can actually snipe things from quite a ways away and you don't need to actually aim very high to account for the crossbow's drop. But I usually just take the faster reload speed just so I have an even faster reload on this. Extra move speed in Tier 4, but either one in Tier 4 is really good. And then in Tier 5, pick whichever one you would like. They're all really good. I'm going to run the potent bolts with this since I'm running pheromone bolts. I would probably run magnetic shafts if I'm running the electricity bolts. And I may run the fear if I'm running the chemical bolts, but really any of them are fine. Pick whichever one you would like. Since this is so flexible and it does very well at single target damage, I decided to pair this with a primary that's pretty good at just everything. So I decided to pick Hipster with the M1000. You get a lot of spam fire with this. It does very well against crowds. It can do very well against single targets. I just spam this out whenever there's smaller enemies that I just want to punch through. And then I switch to quick fire when I want to hit big things even harder. Very simple build, but a very, very fun build too. And then for our final overclock, we have the Specialist. The Specialist is more of a generalist than a specialist, really. This is a clean overclock that just gets you more special bolts and longer lasting special bolts, regardless of which special bolt you wanted to take. So if you take electricity, you get more electricity. If you take pheromones, you get more pheromones and you get longer lasting effects from both of those. That's really good and it kind of works well with anything, however you want to build it. This is a super flexible overclock that's really good on any type of mission. It also doesn't come any downside to your crossbow, so you still have the base very strong crossbow. Usually I build it like this, so in tier 1 I'm taking the pheromone bolts once again. I find those useful for crowds, but if you want to take the other two, they're both really good too. Tier 2, I like taking more special bolts just so that I can have a ton of them. It's not necessary though, you can take whatever you want in tier 2, they're all really good options. Tier 3, I'm taking faster reload speed and faster swap speed, just the convenience of it. Tier 4, more move speed, again, your choice, pick whichever you'd like. And then in tier 5, more potent bolts. That way we can just have even longer lasting pheromones. If you build it like this, it makes sure so your pheromones last for about 17 seconds. That is a really long time to have the pheromone bolts going on stuff. And this is just a really nice crowd control build. If you wanted to go for more single target damage, maybe throw on magnetic shafts and throw on the electricity bolts. If you wanted for a different type of crowd control where you're doing a little bit more damage, maybe go with the chemical bolts. Those can be really good. And then the base crossbow bolts are going to get you decent damage against basically everything. I decided to take this with thermal exhaust feedback for the track, which is a very fun overclock that makes it so you can also apply fire with this. So the main idea is stick something with a pheromone bolt and then just spray the drac into the crowd. And that usually works pretty well. You can light things on fire pretty quick. Crossbow still does high damage to single targets, so you can still pick off all of them pretty fast. And the drag is also pretty well rounded with this. Overall, I really like the crossbow. I think it has some really fun overclocks, and the base crossbow is really good too. Tell me your thoughts on the crossbow down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them, and what type of builds you like to run with it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope it helped you out, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye, everybody.